In Alien Hominid Invasion, these friendly dudes form an alliance with the aliens and supply them with all the facilities they could ask for. To avoid having the FBI intervene though, they've hunkered down in the sewers and built these secret hideouts with weapons, hats, and other fun stuff. There are a lot of things in here that many people may have missed though, so let's dive in and take a close look at them. When you first enter the hideout, you may notice a refrigerator by the lockers. If you look closely, you'll see what might be a familiar face to you. It's the Orange Knight from Castle Crashers. There's also a pixely heart by it, which has a resemblance to the hearts shown in an achievement in that game, but it might also be a reference to the game's prototype, which was shown at Comic-Con in 2005. This early version featured similar looking hearts for the player's health. Or it's just a heart. Stepping away from the fridge but still at the entrance, if you focus your attention on the background and have a keen eye, you'll spot another familiar face. It's the Blue Knight. Hey there, Blue Knight! As we go down to the right side of the hideout, we'll see these two big dummies, but if you look behind them in the shaded area, whoop, what's that? It's the Red Knight! They're popping up everywhere! <laughs> Going up the stairs to the upper floor, we'll find a sneaky little guy by the exit door. The Green Knight! Whee! <laughs> and then to finish it off, we'll go over here and look right off the edge to find one more knight. Last but not least, the Grey Knight! And two of his bombs! Can't forget those! <laughs> That's it for the knights, but as you can see on the right, we've got some flags to go over. Up first is this cute little guy in the bottom. This is Winston, a French bulldog who's the pet and best friend of the behemoth's co-founder and artist, Dan Paladin. The flag above that one shows something a little taller than a dog, an agent. I'm sure everyone could figure that out, but you know, just in case you couldn't. <laughs> now the next flag up shows something silly that all you behemoth fans probably know. It's a wall hugger, also known as a bomb frog. This amphibious performer served as a weapon and tool in their third game, Battle Block Theater, running on anything in its path. It's one of my favorite creations by the Behemoth. Up next is one that some of you might not know. It's the Speckled Horse from their fourth game, Pit People. This helpless creature was featured on the game's startup screen, scarcely appeared in gameplay, but was always there on the loading screen to give you tips and advice. Quite a magnificent creature. This next one you'll never be able to guess. Bum, bum, bum. Alright, you caught me. It might actually be in. Coming up next, we've got something you likely encountered in this very game. A Flybot. The Robo Fly Guy. After that, we've got the Cardinal. Another signature behemoth figure. First appearing in Castle Crashers and then becoming a wearable head in Battle Block Theater. Just legendary. And finally, at the very top of the flagpole is something special. For those who don't know, pooping is a common occurrence with some animals in Castle Crashers, notably the deer. Later into the game, on a level called Full Moon, you can briefly see the silhouette of a deer propelling through the night sky by pooping. I'd say that majestic deer deserves a top spot. Okay, since we're done with the flags now, let's see what these dudes over here are up to. They've got a red book on the floor that might be referencing Super Soviet Missile Master, an old mini game the Behemoth made in the original Alien Hominid. That might be pushing it, but it does have that look to it. Heading over to the left, there's something interesting on the floor. A turtle shell? Turtles in the sewer? Wait a minute! <gasps> Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles! That would be a fitting reference. <laughs> The turtles hang out in the sewer and know how to have fun just like the sewer kids in this game. They must be big fans of TMNT. <laughs> Looking in the background tunnel again, you can see something written on the wall next to the behemoth's logo. Chicken Little. As in Chicken Little! <laughs> the Disney film from 2005. Maybe that's one of the devs' favorite movies. <laughs> After completing your first mission, you'll come back to see this. An open pizza box on a table. <gasps> just like something you'd see from the turtles. They loved pizza. <laughs> If there's ever a pizza lying around a sewer, you know the turtles must have been there. Or the sewer kids. Heading up the stairs, we can see on the right that there's a pretty big drawing of the Megabot with an X over it, indicating what you've defeated so far. After destroying the second headquarters, we could see a couple bumper cars in the tunnel. One's got the number 3 on it, the other's got a 0. Both make the sewer kids and aliens happy in their hideout. After getting a spray tan, ignore that by the way, <laughs> We can go all the way to the right of the hideout and find two skee-ball games, or SKEE-BALL. These could definitely bring some entertainment to the place. And just as expected, the next boss is drawn and crossed out here since we beat Install Ball B. 
After beating the third boss, we'll see that something's missing in the center. There used to be a bike here, but now it's gone. Whoa. But if we go to the left, we'll see some new stuff. This time, it's in the foreground. Using a glitch, I can show you all of it. It's a skateboarding halfpipe, which on the left has a decal of Yosef from Pit People, the demiclops that you join souls with at the start of the game. Pretty gnarly. And on the right of it, we can see a decal of this beast. The beefy form of the king from Castle Crashers. Let's see what's different on the right side of the hideout. Ooh, they're in the foreground again, so here's a better look at them. We got a big trampoline and a vending machine. It says almost soda on it, with a warning that says not suitable for human consumption, so I guess only the aliens can drink out of this, which explains why it's almost soda. And since we've now beaten Bustletron 2.0, that boss is now X'd out. After beating the fourth boss, the bumper cars disappear and some confetti's left on the floor. And we can even see some over here on the right, just all scattered on the bottom of the screen with some festive horns and a couple party hats. The sewer kids were definitely celebrating someone's birthday or something. As usual, another boss is drawn and crossed out. This time, it's the Wasp recalibrated. Hey. Oh no! Hey. The FBI are breaking into the hideout! <laughs> Yep, after beating the fifth boss, they stormed the hideout, smashed the lockers, cracked the monitor, and tore the flag. They really busted up the place. But at least they were kind enough to take the wrench off the floor and put some tools back on the wall. <laughs> Not everything's damaged, and if we look at the halfpipe on the left, we can see that they left something on it. It looks like some device, but it's actually one of their own weapons. That's a nice little gift for the sewer kids. <laughs> Going back up to the exit and looking by the flag, we can't see our little green friend anymore. Maybe the FBI did some erasing. They did some drawing on the chalkboard. And also damage. <laughs> but what else is crossed out and destroyed is the Juice Man. <laughs> and finally, when you return to the hideout after beating the sixth and final boss, you'll notice that all the damage has been mended and the grandmother ship is drawn on the wall. Before we go, I'd like to point out that even on this screen, the Orange Knight and Heart still remain on the refrigerator. Thanks for watching. Lovely, lovely.